We could have tea together. Chapter 3. A Miraculous Ladybug fan fiction written and narrated by Mira Rose. Artwork by Yuki on Pixiv. You can find the link to Yuki's Pixiv in the description box below. If you haven't listened to the previous two chapters of the story already, you can also find links to those in the description box as well. Now then, if you've made it to chapter 3 and haven't subscribed, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, show the support, and uh, keep enjoying this story. Leave a like and a comment as well. If you don't know what to comment, put strawberry rhubarb parfait. If you don't know how to spell rhubarb, that's okay. Now then, chapter three. Marinette Dupang Chang, 20 and four years of age. Oh, that sly cat. Marinette! Alia called, trotting over to her with a glass of something bubbly in her hand. You're here? With cat? He figured it out again? It's a good thing she'd already frozen her smile, else her expression might give her internal screaming away. Pipe down, would you? She hissed throwing an arm around her friend's shoulders to lead her away. Ooh. Alia vocally mimicked her shushing. Good grief. It wasn't even ten in the morning yet. Marinette took the glass from her and dumped it on a plant. So he hasn't? No! Marinette sucked in a breath, already feeling the friendship migraine coming on. You know that. I took away his memory of my identity. Yeah, which means you don't know who he is anymore either. She shot her finger guns. And I haven't been... Well... Marinette looked around. You know who in years. There's no way he knows. Aw, you're no fun. Alia stuck out her bottom lip then grabbed her glass back. Her eyebrows knit together when she found it empty, but tried to shake out the remaining drops onto her tongue anyway. Don't make me take away your memories, too. Please. If you could, you would. There was some truth to that. She'd have to give up something of equal value to take away her identity from Alia, but that would be silly. She's the one who told her in the first place. What are you doing here anyway? Marinette said, trying to change the subject. I could ask you the same thing. She raised an eyebrow like she raised the corners of her mouth, smirking. I'm feeling like you're on a date with a pretty boy. Oh, stop trying to make your OTP happen. A girl can ship. Alia all but sang, shaking Marinette's arm off so she could loop her arm around her elbow. Come on, I'm sure Nino's dying to say hi. Marinette looked over her shoulder and made eye contact with him, then gave a curt nod. Her best friend's husband returned the gesture, expression brightening. He looked from her to Cat Noir, then back, wiggling his eyebrows. Oh, dear. Nino had the same idea as Alia, but with different motivation. She could break apart Alia's ships all day with no remorse, but letting Nino down hit differently. Come on, we should have spot at our table when we heard Cat brought a date, Alia said into her hair, missing her ear. Yeah, sitting down is a good idea for you right now, Marinette muttered holding more of her friend's body weight than she had any business doing this time of the morning. Babe! Alia called. Babe, they're sitting with us! You've got too much energy. Yeah, because I don't deny myself love. Touché. Unless you coming here with that partner of yours is the start of something old or something new. Don't finish that rhyme. I can hold a rhythm. I won't sing my part too soon. Sure. Alia narrowed her eyes. 
You didn't say never. What? Normal Marinette would deny any chance of the Lady Noir ship. But you didn't. That means one of two things. Now Marinette did have a headache. What? She asked, entertaining her friend. Either you're not Marinette, or you're interested in Paris's hottest bachelor. The sing-song voice she declared it with nearly gave her heartburn. Or Gert. She wasn't sure, but it was a nauseous feeling, close to when Cat Noir made a pun in the days before she liked him. I've never been one for clout. Coming from the girl who literally chased Adrian Agrest around. Adrian Agrest? Oops. They'd walked over and gotten a bit too close to the boys. Cat looked up their friend's name on his lips, and she found herself blushing with secondhand embarrassment for her younger self's actions. Just talking about old memories is all, Marinette said, tucking hair behind her ear. Checking in on an old friend? Kat asked. Something like that. He's doing all right, I'd say. Oh? You keep tabs on him? He played me in the first Miraculous movie. You could say I have a personal interest in him. And the second, she said, holding back a wink so Alia wouldn't go off about it. Her efforts were in vain. Cat Noir winked as he responded. And the third. Now if only Marinette voiced Ladybug. Now wouldn't that be something? Alia said, a little too loudly as her husband pulled her away and into a chair. Alia, it's like 10 in the morning, Kat said, his lips and brows twisted in bemusement. Oh, okay, Mr. Dimples. Like, you haven't ever gotten too excited because you're going to see your OTP. Huh? The entertainment on his face froze into mild concern. Alia, are you, like, okay? She was watching a show on her phone this morning. Right? Marinette cut in, shooting daggers at her best friend with her eyes. Gotta ship them all! OTP! Alia repeated, and even Nino sighed. So, uh, what is this? Marinette asked, looking around. She was acutely aware of the wandering gazes that kept crossing over them. The snoops. Not that she could blame their curiosity. It's not every day Cat Noir attends a formal event. He's more of an on-the-streets alley cat. A tea party, Cat said, grinning. Could you be more specific? He pulled out a chair for her and gestured. A fundraiser for the local farming community. And you gave what? Your face? My princess, my presence is almost as precious as yours, don't you think? She inhaled sharply and without meaning to. My princess cut too close to my lady. You've measured an error. You're right. Your time is far more valuable. An accomplished businesswoman versus a bumbling street cat? No competition. A street cat that saved Paris. She mumbled into her pint glass. She'd grabbed it as soon as they'd sat down. Its rouge tint a sure savior if the conversation went astray. The iced tea was stinky and sweet and tart all at the same time. Taking a sip, it met her expectations. Not amazing, but not bad. She liked the sweet tart tea he'd brought the day prior more. Do you like it? He asked, leaning in. It's not bad. She gave it another taste. What's it called? Strawberry rhubarb parfait. Hmm. Wow. They're off in their own little world. Alia hissed, and Kat blinked a twinkle into his eye as he looked at her. A secret laced into his smile. Oh no, 
How dare I get along with my date? He sighed, and Marinette tried to not bite her lip. His date. Yeah, she was his date. Now if her chest could calm down enough for her to enjoy it, she might even consider going on a second, less public date. Even if Tiki protested. How... <sighs> How long have you been dating? Alia burped, grabbing a tea glass for herself. Oh, yum. Marinette exchanged glances with Nino, then Cat Noir, only to see a wicked grin grow on his face. Oh, no. Who? Us? Cat laced his fingers through hers, and she tugged him to her. What are you doing? She asked through gritted teeth. She keeps bugging both of us about our dating lives. Two birds, one stone, right? Ladybug, help us, she murmured back, using slang that developed through Paris over the past few years. Two weeks, honeymoon stage, you know? Cat turned to Alia and gave his best flashy wink, unevolved despite the years since she last saw it. I see. Alia sipped her tea as Nino looked between them. Despite the tipsiness, Marinette knew her best friend had her suspicions. How'd it start? She saved me from a band of vagabonds. You mean your fangirls? They appear at all hours. Must be homeless. Despite the lip gloss? I'm sure they raid the bourgeois hotel before they come each time. You get a point for referencing Chloe's makeup bag getting stolen, but you haven't defended your poor word choice. Excuse you, vagabond is an excellent word choice. Is it? Alia raised an eyebrow. Or do you just like saying it? Both. Have your cake and eat it too, Cat Noir. He squeezed Marinette's fingers and raised their hands a few centimeters for effect. Already am. Well, aren't you too cute? Alia said, cut off by an announcer inviting people to sit for the event. Marinette fought the weight of her eyelids as the host dragged on, word by word. Even holding her breath in bursts wasn't enough to keep her up. But there's no way she'd fall asleep at an event, especially when curious eyes fix their gaze on her and the man she sat next to. Fame is a curse, and having a miraculous works like a rune. Kat nudged her at one point, and for that, she was grateful. But she couldn't hide her body's betrayal with a smile. Wanna get out of here? Kat whispered, breath tickling her ear before she realized he'd leaned in. How? She murmured back. He grabbed her bag, a bigger one than she'd tote to an event like this, but brought at his insistence, then her hand. He looked around before turning to her, a grin on his face, then nodded to someone behind her. Marinette heard a clatter and, before she could turn, Cat pulled her out of her chair, racing her between tables while the diversion went on. Oh, silly cat. Surely there were better ways to do this. But the energy pulsing between their fingers was something she hadn't felt in a long while, and the, useful, and the youthfulness of it all kept her feet going, past the parking and down the block until they came to a great oak tree, where he let go of her hand to scamper up halfway. Cat settled himself on a branch, then reached back for her. Tree fort? Her grin matched his as she took his hand back and placed a foot on bark, and he pulled her up. Two adults sitting on an old oak limb like children hiding from teachers. I used to do this with Ladybug, he said, leaning against the bark and looking out over the park. Yeah. Paparazzi never thought to look up unless it's at a roof. You sound like you have experience. I had a miraculous too, remember? You did?
did? His face scrunched. Wait, who were you? Meredith's heart froze. He didn't remember she was multi-mouse? He'd taken a moment to look her over, studying like a pop quiz was being handed out, then turned away. Huh. I never knew. He didn't remember? Was it because of when she took his memory? She was only supposed to take his memory of her being Ladybug. Had she taken his memory of her being a miraculous holder in general? Well, I wasn't used too often. Besides, it was only temporary until it got passed on. Why didn't she keep you? Cat turned to her, and there was something deep in his eyes she couldn't make out. Another holder found out my identity. Carapace and Rena Rouge knew each other. I'm... It was hard to justify it, even now. I'm sure she had her reasons. I don't know. He swung his legs, his hands back in his lap. I just don't know. The breeze rustled the leaves above and around them, and Marinette had to wonder if this was something he'd dwelled on before. Not the identities, of course, or even Ali and Nino being allowed to know who the other was. No, Marinette wondered if Kat had ever noticed the gap in his memory. She'd done a pretty good job stitching him back together, and it's not like he hadn't agreed to it in the first place. They both paid their price. Instead of knowing who the other was under the mask, they were partners whose truths would lie together in forgotten memory. At least, that's what her diary said. Even past her was careful enough not to write down the truth that she wondered about from time to time. She knew the answer, but asked it anyway. What would you do? If Ladybug came back? Cat let out a half-hearted chuckle, then put his head on her shoulder. Cry. And then? I don't know. The leaves continued to shimmy in the wind. I wouldn't know where to begin. They stayed like that for a period of time. Marinette wasn't sure if it was for a few minutes or even a few hours, but cars rumbled and children laughed as Cat, the weight of his head on her shoulder, stared out at the street in front of him. This was a tree he used to escape to with Ladybug, and they would joke about people watching until the coast cleared. But those sparkling days were gone. Ladybug was gone. And Tiki was in her purse. It would be so easy. Two words and they'd be back to those days. And even though everything would be different, they'd have each other again. No. No, she stopped being Ladybug for a reason. Although, in this moment, she couldn't remember why. That's right. Why? Why did Marinette stop being Ladybug in the first place? She wrapped her arm around Cat's back, pulling him closer to her and shaking the tree. Leaves tumbled down as she pressed her lips to the crown of his head. A kiss of sorrows and apology he might never understand. Marinette? He looked up at her, and she had to swallow down her emotions. Sorry, she whispered, looking away. She shouldn't have done that. What's wrong? I'm glad you're here with me, Kat. He followed her eyes to the street. Yeah, he said, words distorted as he settled his face back into her shoulder. 
with you. She heard him rustle in her purse, only to pull out a bottle. What is... She began, realizing it before she finished the question. Did you steal from the reception? Call it a last-ditch reward. Marinette, sighing, wiggled her shoulder enough to shimmy him off. You're something else, Kitty. I think it's a perfect time for tea, don't you think? He twisted the bottle open, took a sip, then offered it to her. She hesitated, but the glimmer in his eye pushed her over. She took it, then a sip, and handed it back. Good, right? Is that the strawberry rhubarb parfait? Yeah, needs a bit of sugar, I think. You like dessert, don't you? What can I say? One of my beloveds grew up in a bakery. It comes with a territory. A beloved? Marinette raised an eyebrow. Really? I'm not talking about you, of course. He looked her dead in the eye. Just the other klutzy, self-proclaimed miraculous holder of a baker's daughter that I know. Har har. She bumped her shoulder into his, and he made a show of getting pushed over. But I mean it, he said, straightening. Your beloved, Marinette. At least for me. The glow in her heart could melt the crushed ice in the bottle. Same, she said, unable to keep her eyes locked with his. But with you. She took another drink, longer this time, to avoid the conversation, but it was over. No, instead of talking, they sat in an oak tree, limb to limb, and took in Paris and her proof of life. As far as first dates go, this hadn't been a bad one. Not in the slightest. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you liked this part. If you are still listening, comment Old Oak Tree, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye! Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Thank you!